hope you're having a good day today. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be looking at the account of the Lord's temptations today. Our hymn is, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Appreciate it, Lee. I'd like to look at the second verse of the hymn as well. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. Our passage is Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I believe the parallel accounts say immediately after the Lord's baptism. When he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Angels also came in the garden. This is one of the other places where it speaks of the angels coming and ministering to Jesus. Might think about those implications. But to the account, what points might we make? One is this. When we are facing temptation, when we're facing trials, use the power of God unto salvation. Use the Word. That is why the Word has been given, and that's what Jesus uses. He does not use miracles here. He's not going to use a miracle to fulfill for, for his own selfish desires. That, that's not what the miracles were for. He's using the same thing that we have available to us. He uses the word. Three times he says, it is written, verse 4, verse 7, it is written, Verse 10, it is written, use the word, first and foremost. It's why it's, it's why it's been given. It's what equips us. When we think about the way of escape, we better remember a component of that way of escape is man lives by the word of God. Not only, though, must we use the word, back to our passage, we must use it correctly. Because this, in the second temptation, when the devil says, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, he says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And he quotes from the Old Testament. And he quotes, he quotes the passage accurately. But he's misusing it. He's misusing it, and he thinks the Lord will use it for selfish means. And Jesus doesn't do it. Not only do we have to use the word, we have to make sure we're rightly using it. We're rightly dividing the word of God. It's very easy to twist scriptures. Paul, when he's writing to Timothy, he talks about the law is good if one uses it lawfully. The Judaizers, they were twisting it. The devil, twisting it. 
That's what people do. People who are unstable, I believe Peter talks about they're unstable and they, they twist it to their own destruction. Twist things that are hard to understand to their own destruction. We better make sure we're using Scripture correctly. It's a, it's a great sadness when people pull verses out of context. People who should know better, and we should all know better, to pull a verse out of context and to give it a meaning it doesn't mean. And it's not God's intended meaning. You might just think about all of the verses that are often used um, in an inspirational way. I have plans to prosper you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Remember, there was, there was a person one time. Let me, let me open my Bible. Um, beyond just digitally online. I'm looking in Genesis. I'm looking at the account in the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel, and the person didn't say it was the Tower of Babel. But as the, the folks at the Tower of Babel, as they were working together, and this person, they, they simply quoted a verse. This is the verse. Indeed, the people are one, and they have all one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. And if you just take the verse on its own, it's like, oh, that's so wonderful. Nothing will be withheld from them because they are one and they have one language. What an inspiring verse. And then you realize that's the Tower of Babel, and they're disobeying God, and they're trying to make a name for themselves. Use the word, but use it correctly. In our passage, again, As the Lord says, away with you, Satan. Away with you, Satan. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. May not be the first time, may not be the second time, but eventually the devil leaves. Now he's seeking an, um, an opportune time. The devil hadn't forgotten. But nonetheless, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. The devil leaves and the angels come and minister to the Lord. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.